So, good evening. Um, I thought I'm going to make another video tonight. And what we want to talk about tonight in tonight's video is a fairly neglected part. It's called the altitude sensor. And um, it is located in the 126 and the 5.6 liter and in the 4.2 liter to the left of your idle speed control unit which is in the footwell compartment um, right there on top so you have the ECU to the right the idle speed control unit in the middle this to the left and then further to the left is your alarm system and uh, I wanted to take a closer look at this here I'm going to show you how to test it and why this item should not be neglected and uh, or completely disconnected as some people suggest doing and I'm going to show you this here what we're going to do as a short recap here my other table book or both books are now here you can see the 89 book is substantially thicker and we will get to this what I'm going to do is if I get an assistant we will do a video where we're going to actually show on how to adjust the height of the plate correctly as I had indicated in the other video and then also on how to properly actually do the adjustment on the plate for the mixture on the hex key. But today we want to talk about this here. I set the unit up because this system works of 5 volts and the 5 volts is supplied by the ECU or CIS unit. And uh, let me turn this around now, because this is really where we want to look at this here. What I did is I pulled up the book, which makes it a little bit easier. Altitude sensor table. We have sea level, 1,000 meters and 2,000 meters, and it will give us a reading, 4 volts, 3 volts, and 2 volts. The plus 1 is not correct. Uh, so this is not plus minus one volt. This is actually a different value and I have to look this up because this would be too erratic for this whole system and I will explain this why. Um, in the manual further up front it gives us an operating range for pin one. Um, you can see this here the pins are labeled here. Pin one is on the right, two is in the middle and three is to the left. Pin one has a supply coming between four and a half to 5.5 volt, usually five volts. The ECU puts this supply voltage out and it also measures it because if you put 4.5 volt out, it will then get a scaled output back. So it knows it doesn't really matter as long as this is in this range. These sensors are very difficult to test in the car while the car is running because of the connector they have. Uh, you would have to get the breakout box and that is not always feasible. And um, the easier way to test them is with a lab power supply. You can use any lab power supply. Most of them, they go from zero to 30 volts, from zero to two amps, zero to three amps. They have a current adjust and the voltage adjust, just like my big one here. And all you need to do is just set this for about five volts. You wanna measure this at five volts. And I'm gonna show you this here. Um, this is my plus lead. And I'm gonna hook this up here. And I'm gonna, this is on pin one now. And this is my minus lead. Both of these have been used heavily over the years. So we have now connected the unit. I will bring the meter into the picture. And um, if I get to it, you can see now we're measuring actually 2.5 volts or 2.446 volts. Now what I did is I wrote this down here and you can see this. Excuse my handwriting. This is supposed to be 333 meters, 666 meters, and 999. I broke it up in thirds. 333 meter is 1,092 feet in altitude, 2,185, and 3,277. 
that gives us a scale of uh, output at a thousand feet of about 3.7 volts at 2,200 feet, 3.3 volts, and at 3,300 feet, about three volts. And now you saw that I'm reading 2.5 volts. Well, I played a little bit with this unit. It was actually at three volts, but I'm located in Beishu, Kansas, and our elevation is exactly 9,981 feet. That means I should be reading about 3.7 volts and I was reading, this is the one out of my car, I was reading 3 volts. So this unit here told my ECU I was at an altitude of 3,300 feet. And um, just to show you the scaling of this, this is the new unit I ordered from eBay for $20. And at 5 volts, I was reading 3.53 volts, which is a lot closer to 3.7 than 3 volts with the old unit here. And uh, at 4.49, that is the lower limit here, I was reading 3.213. Sorry for my handwriting. And at 5.5, I was reading 3.936 again. This result here would be scaled because the ECU knows it's putting out 5.5. So it can automatically calculate itself in the uh, processor and the software. It would derive at this value here, basically. And what this means is that my car would be running slightly leaner than what it should be. And the reason why this is important, and a lot of people neglect this part, I have neglected it too, is um, because at sea level, we basically have four volts. And at sea level, you probably want the richest, uh, the highest enrichment you can get because of the high oxygen in the air uh, for the combustion for your fuel to air or air to fuel mixture ratio. Um, that also has an impact on the idle speed control unit and on the EZL because the vacuum, the advance will depend on two things. Um, for one is this unit here is only this unit here is only going into or being processed by the uh, CIS I call it the ECU in combination with the temperature water temperature sensor B112 slash 2 and when you first start the car the ECU will get a reading of the ambient temperature at start so whether it's cold or hot it will know what the starting point is. And as you probably know, is that cold air has more oxygen or carries more oxygen, is denser than hot air. And that will give them a idea when they look at the altitude sensor of what the mixture is. So the water temperature sensor and the altitude sensor, they work hand in hand. And those two units are the ones with the potentiometer of the flow uh, of the plate, the plate potentiometer, give the whole thing, uh, system a closed loop, uh, feedback loop to control the EHA valve for mixture adjustment. And that is the one you can adjust with the three millimeter Allen screw for 50% um, duty cycle. So you get the correct mixture. But that requires two things, that the temperature sensor works correctly and that the altitude sensor is working correctly. Now, if you live, for instance, in the Florida Keys and you never go anywhere, you're pretty much at zero feet altitude, 10 feet to 50 feet altitude, something like this. This unit will hardly recognize it. And it means that it pretty much runs more or less at the uh, mixture being completely dependent upon the temperature, starting ambient temperature, and that it works its way out from there. Now, I live in Bayshore, Kansas, and like I said, we're right at a 981 feet altitude, and of course, we go through the season, which means hot, less dense air, cold in the winter, very cold, zero degrees, like minus 10, what we had in the last season, um, very high oxygen level. Now, if I go from here and I drive from Kansas, from Bayshore, west, I will right off I-70, 
and I go say like to Fort Riley, which is probably about 100 miles, 150 miles west of here, I'm going to be at 2,000 feet elevation already. If I'm going to drive to 520 miles from here, I'm going to be in Denver, Colorado, and I'm going to be at 5,500 feet elevation, 4,500 feet higher than what we are here. 5,000 feet is about one mile above sea level, just that you get an idea. If I'm going to choose to drive then north-northwest of Denver to Laramie, Wyoming, I'm going to be almost at 7,000 feet altitude. And with the temperatures in the summer uh, being as high as they are, this thing has to work because otherwise the car is going to run waste rich for the altitudes we're experiencing out here. And if I have, say, like what some people suggest is to disconnect this, well, then the car is basically never going to go into the um, closed loop monitoring, whether you have the closed loop control where you can actually see and watch the duty cycle on your X11 and adjust it for the 50%, because this here will then throw an error number eight. Uh, on your diagnostic socket if you check for hours. On some cars it may even have the engine light come on, on other cars it may not. These sensors are used in all gasoline engines with CIS for most of the 80s and 90s and um, this is not a map sensor by any means, this is a barometric pressure sensor which only senses altitude and like I said, this, this is used in combination with the temperature sensor B11-2 to determine the uh, approximate oxygen content in the air when the car is first started. That will give the system a idea. Then it goes just over monitoring here. So when what happens is as further west you drive and you disconnect it, your engine is basically running rich. And as more in altitude you get and higher you get, is worse your car is going to run because your oxygen is going to get less and less and the mixture is getting richer and richer and your engine eventually will stall out in the middle of the highway. This is not an uncommon sight. Um, with a disconnected sensor I probably would not even make it to, to Denver. I probably would, uh, my car would die out somewhere on I-70 maybe 50, 200 miles, 100 miles before Denver out there in the Kansas Plains in western Kansas where all the windmills are. This is the reality of this. And what actually happened here with my old sensor is this, um, the same issue you have with the potentiometers, that the um, potentiometers for the plate is that they get a a dent mark in here and that is very difficult to see let me see if I can zoom in and show you actually the mark and here you can see this this is just a potentiometer I have to stand up to see this yeah you can see it right here there's the mark the dent and this was putting out constant three volts because this here no longer moved it was basically frozen in this position. So my ECU got completely the wrong information and it thought it was a 3000 feet altitude because that's what the three volts basically correlate to. That's what I had coming out of this year before I opened it up. And um, I'm at 1000 feet. So I'm 2000 feet too high. The new unit I got is not quite accurate either because I'm at 3.5 which is per maybe 1,500 feet, 2,000 feet, no, less than that, 1,500 feet about. So we're off by 500. And the reason why I bought the $20 unit first was to compare this to something too, because the Mercedes-Benz sells those, the lowest price I found them from MB was $141 going all the way to 180 via the uh, different dealership websites they have online parts for Mercedes-Benz parts. So I will be ordering a new one because this one already is on the low side. So this tells me two things as SDH. For one is the uh, reading is gonna be unstable because of the mark in the uh, uh, resistive material on here in the black part. The same problem you have with the, um, um, with the potentiometers for the 
flow plate, flow meter, basically the air movement on there. The same thing, and you have this in here too, which gives you an erratic reading. And then the other thing is that they basically age, and with aging is they're showing a higher and higher altitude and the mixture would therefore become leaner and leaner and leaner and you're trying to enrich this and it no longer works right. The other thing is there is a little tiny ball in here. I don't know if you can see this. Let me see if I can show you this. There is a little tiny ball in there, right there. And what happens is this ball gets dirty with grease and uh, you know, from humidity, they're not sealed very well. And then it is electromechanical, which means the springs, all of the spring stuff goes out, uh, you know, and then it just deteriorates. You probably could readjust them, but eventually you will have to buy a new one. If you are at sea level, you probably could put a resistor in, you could measure the value out when you go. So you have four volts on pin two constantly. Uh, you would have to do a voltage divider between the three um, where the middle connection between the two resistors is going to put you out four volts. But I would not drive this car into any altitude. If you try to come up, you just to base you at a thousand feet with this kind of resistor in there to replace this here, you're probably going to stall out with your vehicle. Um, people say this is not noticeable. The only way you notice this is when you're trying to adjust the duty cycle for one. And then the other thing is at higher altitudes, what will happen, the RPM will drop because of the lack of oxygen. And if the engine doesn't um, start to lean out with the EHA valve or the ECU system doesn't start to lean this out, then the idle speed control valve is going to drop the current and it will go below 700 milliamps all the way down to 200 milliamps. It will be fully open just to get air in there. If you go, say, like you drive and you go off the highway uh, to get gas or whatever, you, um, you may stall out just uh, the first time you stop the car and the uh, throttle position switch is closed for idle. Uh, the, the idle speed control valve would be fully open and uh, the engine would not get enough air anymore. You would just basically drown the engine in, in gasoline and fuel basically. Plus you probably gotta have blue smoke coming out of there or some form of smoke out of the exhaust like there's no tomorrow. This like I said, this is only relevant in these altitudes where we live in out here. When you're out uh, west on Kansas, uh, Kansas City going west uh, that will a uh, this will be a part which is going to cause a lot of grief, especially with the transitionary temperatures we're going through and and that sort of stuff. And so, for me, the issue was that it was actually too high in altitude, which gave the ECU the wrong reading, and it got the wrong mixture. And now by replacing this to this this should we improve it by I actually should be around 3.7 volts so I will order a new one here in a couple weeks three weeks from now from Mercedes Benz and I will put this in and uh, like I said this, this is an often neglected part most people don't understand what it does all it does it measures barometric pressure which it equates to altitude and that works in conjunction with your temperature not when the engine is warming up only at the very first start and that is the same calculations they do uh, to determine whether or not to uh, turn on the cold start valve at minus 10 degrees celsius um, you know that is the determination so this is where the unit knows where to start the engine or what the environmental condition is when you start at altitude, ambient temperature through a cold engine block, basically measured with B11 slash two. And uh, that's the two values. And the EZL, of course, has their own part, their own temperature sensor back, and then the vacuum port, that's the two main ones in there. And uh, when the temperature is there in the vacuum, the vacuum will change because of the, um, air to fuel mixture 
uh, the EHA valve, which influences the idle speed RPM if you're idling, and that will also then uh, influence the EZL unit through the vacuum. And the EZL has a vacuum operating range between 15 uh, inch Henry, uh, inch mercury to about 21 inch mercury. That's a very narrow range the EZL operates in. And even the smallest offset by one or two inch mercury can change the entire pattern and you can wind up with a higher uh, or lower uh, idle speed. You could have an idle speed situation with this malfunctioning sensor, not correctly working sensor at altitude, where the engine basically would run too low. Then the lower altitudes, you're probably gonna go faster. In the higher altitudes, you're probably gonna run too low because neither one of the two regulations is correct. And um, this is the correct part number here. This is, like I said, the one out of mine car. This is the original one, I guess. Fortunately, there is no, or unfortunately, there is no date on this one. And uh, the new one I got in there, like I said, is I bought one of eBay. This came in today. The fellow was so nice. He even packed it up here in this little package. And um, those were the measured values. So get yourself a little lab power supply, $30, $50 or so, $100 with a top couple test clips with it. And then you can start measuring this on the multimeter and you can uh, properly inspect these systems. Like I said, it is a lot easier to do this when it is outside uh, the unit. When you have it like on a table, you can see better and you don't have to worry about shortening anything and you can carefully inspect it. And like I said, it's most likely your sensor is going to be, this one is 30, 32, 33 years old. And as soon as these potentiometers get these marks and they are from the uh, wiper arm, basically, which is in essence driven by the barometric measuring device here. Um, once they get dent in there, uh, the reading is highly inaccurate. In my case, it was off by 700 millivolts. That is a huge error. We should be at 3.7. If you're down at three, that is a pretty big error. If you're at 3.5, that is probably gonna be the lower tolerances, which means the $20 I spent was good enough to verify that this does not work, or is not, is this weighs out. And that justifies me now to spend $140, $150 or so with shipping to buy a new one like this. So if I do go over to Denver, I will not have a problem with my engine dying out and I have a much easier time in our altitude here to actually adjust the mixture control. And don't connect it. It's, it's not a good idea to connect a sensor as important as this one for your uh, mixture control for, properly, uh, for proper operations of the engine if you want your vehicle to work right. And with that, you have a great night.